how great it was to see some of y'all in the flesh last night. Thanks for coming to Joe's Pub. That was fun. That was fun. But today, it's Watch Me Work. It's Watch Me Work where the me and the title is you. <laughs> now you guys know. So, um, hey, hey, Watch Me Work people. For those of you um, who don't know what this is, I'll give the little intro. It's um, Watch Me Work where we hang out together and get some work done. And the focus is on your work and your creative process. Um, we've been doing this for going on 12 years now. And we thank Howl Around and we thank the public theater for making it happen. Um, and here's how we work together. We hang out and I set the timer for 20 minutes and then we uh, work together uh, and then we come back and we talk about your work and your creative process. And Audrey, if there's something else that I've forgotten to say. You didn't forget. You're just, it's, it's my turn to tell you how to answer a question. So Great. we're good. Um, so uh, if you want to ask a question um, and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button, which is in the reactions tab, which is likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching on our stream, you can ask us questions at, at watch me work SLP on Twitter with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can write to the public theaters, Instagram, or Twitter, and we'll get it that way. I think that's it, though. And I think that's it. I, yeah, except all the good, juicy stuff that happens. Starting now, we ready? And... <laughs>
All right. Okay. All right. Here we are. We're back. We're here. Ready? <laughs> we got a question. You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, Larry, go for it. Hi, SLP. Hey, Larry. How you doing, man? Okay. How are you? Good, good, good. Happy Hi. Monday. Happy Monday. Um, I have a possible opportunity waiting to find out. I may get a grant through my school to do a workshop. And oh. I wanted to talk to you about the workshop. And um, I guess, you know, having been, you know, I, I, I met you through ACT and we did lots of little workshops and <laughs> regional theaters do a lot of workshops and sometimes for better and sometimes for worse and mm -hmm. seem to be constructive and not so constructive. And I guess I just was wondering what your experience is in terms of has it helped you to hand your play over to actors and listen to actors do it? And when do you do that in your process? How do you prepare for that as a writer? Do you, do you just simply try to finish a play and then you hear it? Or do you ever go into a workshop with certain questions or unfinished ideas or things like that? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just was interested in your experience. Mm -hmm. about as a writer, handing your work to actors while you're still in process? Mm -hmm. Great question, Larry. And congratulations on maybe getting an opportunity to develop yeah, yeah. your work. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Yeah, right, right. That's really great, man. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, different writers work differently, and certainly you work differently. It's the same writer might work differently given different situations, you know? If they're yeah. actors you know really well, it's a different kind of situation than actors that you don't know at all, a director that you've never worked with, that kind of thing. So it does vary. Um, also, what you want out of the workshop varies. So without you don't have to net, sort of name names or be, get specific, but is it a group that you know well or is it a group that you're totally new to or what? Actually, it's... Um, I, I'm... I'm I'm uh, thinking of amassing actors. As I told you, I've sort of, this is my, I don't know if you remember this little Sisyphus play of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I sort of developed it sort of like back and forth through like sort of like a devising thing and then just a writing thing. And mm -hmm. it's kind of, the pendulum is kind of swung between sort of building it through my directing ability and mm -hmm. then just... Mm -hmm pushing myself to just, Larry, shut up, you're a writer, stop being a director and just pretend, uh -huh. pretend uh -huh. you're a writer. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, and one of the things I feel like is that um, uh, I, I've, I've lost a little bit of the spirit of wanting it to, to reflect voices other than my own. So I was thinking about um, basically getting an, a group of actors that have not participated in the process at all and kind of testing and see how does it sound with people who don't know what the hell I'm talking about, who haven't been involved in the beginning and just seeing does it, does it stand on its own and what do new voices bring to it? So they'd be actors I know, but they don't, uh -huh. know, they don't, they know, don't the, know the project, right? They don't know the piece. Um, uh, well, okay, let's see. Um, Cause there's so, there's so many variables here. So, I would say um, what I like to do is I like to finish your work before I, I mean, not finish, get to the end, like the end, literally the end, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. um, that's just my process. So, but some writers go in and they've got an idea, you know, and they're going to work shop it and figure out. Um, I like to go in with the, having gotten to the end, um, again, I'm not judging the quality of my draft, you know, I got to the end. Um, um, I like to do what I call the writer's work, which then frees up the actors to do the actor's work. Again, this is just me. I'm not one of those writers so far anyway, who goes in going, I don't know the story of the play at all. Actors, could you help me? You know, they, a lot of writers do that. 
I don't know these characters. They, if they're maybe outside of my presenting person, my presenting self, you know, actor, I'm going to cast some actors who are living that experience daily. Maybe they can help me. I'm not one of those writers. You know, I'm going to go there as best I can. Um, if I'm writing something who is outside of my person um, or not, I'm going to go there as best I can. So I'm not asking the actors to do the work that I consider to do, be the writer's work. I'm asking the actors to amplify and clarify what I've gotten so far and not help me figure it out. That's, the, you know, because then I, I feel like they do their best work. Um, it's like if, if you have kids and, you, you know, you're parenting, you know, you're going to lead, <laughs> you know, and then, and then people can feel comfortable in what they have to do. That's just my style, though. but different people work different ways and they're all valid. Um, you just have to let the actor, everybody know what the expectations are from the beginning. Um, so for me, I like to be, have reached an end of a script. And personally, just to take that to the next level, I like to be a couple of drafts in. I haven't yet been so eager to, I got to hear it, you know, uh, I can hear it fine at home in my head, you know, or if I need to hear it out loud, I can read it aloud. Um, I, I only bring in other people when I've done a significant amount of work, not done, not perfect, but just a significant amount of work so I, that I can lead, um, you know, so, and that doesn't exclude, you know, other voices ideas or anything like that it's just that I, I it's it's my play <laughs> it's my script it's not our script we're not writing it i'm writing you know and they're acting and that this person over here is directing or whatever okay. yeah does that help at all so uh and workshops you know they can last a week they can last a month they could be workshop just before the production you know it, it really depends what kind of expectations you have and what what the the runway looks like you know are you going to take flight or are you just going to workshop and say thank you very much and we'll see you next incarnation that kind of thing it depends is that helpful it's okay but congratulations on on, on uh, having that opportunity sounds like it's going to be fun thanks larry um all right we're going to go to chris next go for it chris hey chris hi susan laurie um, so my question for you is about, um, I've been working on this project for the last year and a half and mm -hmm. for the first six months of it, I was writing it. And then for the last year, I've been filming it and writing it as I've been making it. And it's okay. kind of a hybrid documentary. So parts of it are, uh, fictional scenes that are written by me. And then parts of it are documentary scenes that are just kind of improvised and, and, uh, happen as I film them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm now at the end of um, filming this project. I'm going to be done in 10 days. Uh -huh. And um, I've been working on writing the, like, the final scenes. And mm -hmm. I've been rewriting them and rewriting them. And um, none of the versions of the scenes have, have manifested in a way that feels um, uh, like they're ready to film. Um, mm -hmm. but it feels like I'm running out of time. Um, so I, I was just wondering if you have any thoughts or advice on the scenes that like we rewrite and rewrite and we just can't quite crack them, mm -hmm. um, particularly when you have a, a deadline that's mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. That's a really great question. Particularly when we have a deadline and a medium that is, is a fixed, you know, film, film is different from, you know, I'm going into first previews on my play or something like that. Um, um, let's see a couple. Um, how when when do you have to give the pages to the actors? I'm assuming like the day of or day before. Oops, you're muted. Uh, Chris. Oh, one second. Let me see if I can get you it's back okay. on. Sorry. Okay. There you go. There you go. Um, Yes, there isn't. Yeah, I, I could give them the the pages on the day of. Great. Okay, so so you have your 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 finish line, right? Just day of, so you can go because if it were a play and we were going into, you know, previews, you, you know, you you just have to be mindful about when you're handing actors pages, right? So when it, if it's a play, so it it's it's medium dependent. 
um, okay, so you have right up until the last day, right? And even on set, and you have the magical thing called reshoots. Uh huh. I mean, if you do that at all, I don't know. I, I, uh, I think this project probably won't have reshoots, um, but because uh, I mean, it's it's a weird project. So it's uh, a lot of it is. Uh, it's a project that I've been making with my family. It's kind mm -hmm. of been about making a project in quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm moving away. And part of it is just that like, I've been working this project for the last year and a half and I've been growing out my, my beard and my hair oh. throughout the process of it. And so I'm just going to be filming it. I'm going to be shaving and cutting it all off at the end of it. So it's just that if we were to reshoot, it would, it would clearly be a different, <laughs> different time. Okay. But I'm just saying that you are, so just, I, I would say, keep that door open. You know that song? I'm going to leave the door open. Okay, leave the door. I would say leave the door open. Okay. Because then you have, because you're, because making a film, I mean, in my experience, I made movies and TV shows, the film, you know, the film that is made in the editing room and we do reshoots. It's part of the process. So yeah. if so that you you got to get it right on the day, sure, you got to have the right pages to hand out. But if there's something that you want to redo, you get reshoot. You you can do you can reshoot a scene. Yeah. And so you can give yourself the opportunity. It's like it's just like if you were say if, if you I mean there used to be writers. There used to be writers. There probably are still writers. But the beats, you know, you know, first draft, best draft. I think it was the beats. It was some group of people. <laughs> first draft best draft that's what they'd say like they didn't believe in rewriting no you know i'm just a genius and i just put it out there and it's brilliant and that's what we're gonna do and that's something okay it's an idea it's an idea <laughs> great great you know no worries everybody you know there are many different faiths uh and um they're all valid but some eh, you know so you can if you i i like doing reshoots if i have to i like doing rewrites if i if i would need to you know, I'm I, uh, because, uh, yeah, so I'm just saying, so you write yeah. all the way up until the day, until the morning, you know, mm -hmm. and then you fly with what you've got. And then you consider the possibility of reshoots, i.e. you might not want to shave your beard mm -hmm. until you feel like, yeah, I got it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And even if you feel like wake up on the morning of with pages that you feel good about, hand them out and shoot them, I would suggest still don't shave your beard yeah pause see what you've got when you look at the dailies or however you know you're yeah. going to look at it you know what i mean and, yeah. and sit with it for a couple of days or a week or so just just to give yourself some generosity there yeah i would suggest yeah, so that there's not I mean, the pressure of it has to be the, right the version <laughs> exactly i mean you know there, there are times when i've you know had to you know playing music or whatever, and you, you, you write the song, you rewrite the song, you rewrite the song, you go on stage with what you've got, and you play it, and it flies, and fine. But then you can always, like, that's what I had on the day. But if you've got reshoots available to you, I'd say just consider it. Yeah. You know? Awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you, Susan Laurie. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, all right, Vernita. Vernita, hi. Were you writing some articles? Is this this the Were you writing some articles ages ago? Yes. Yeah. How'd it come out? Oh my goodness. That's well, that's why I had to come back and share. So I'm like, I'm so glad this is here. Hey, SLP. Hey, Audrey. I'm like, the gang's all here. Crystal has <laughs> this fire haircut. I'm loving her haircut. <laughs> and Melania's here. Yeah. Look at everybody. Jim's here. Everybody's here. Everybody. Okay. Everybody's here. Um, so yes, well, well, one, I wanted to just quickly say congrats again on the United States versus Billy Holiday. Oh, thank you. Very, thank very you. much. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, so yes, the smart and hot article, um, the, my former client that I called out systemic racism, town and country and the Hearst corporation, um, has, it was published in the daily beast. Uh, it was named Best of the Beast two years in a row. I just got that um, this past, uh, a couple weeks ago, in November, because I published in, um, thank you, thank you, in oh. October of, it came out October 2020. Mm -hmm. and was named Best of the Beast November 2020. So it just got named again for November wow. 2021. 
Yes. Also, a award-winning podcast episode around the article. Wow. Um, new lifestyle brand. So one of one of the quotes in the article um, has lent to me really shaping a brand around this idea. I say in the article, Black people are the definitive hot sauce on an otherwise bland white America. And so that has lent to the brand America's Hot Sauce. <laughs> right on, right on. And um, last thing, I'm like, what else, what else? And a lot of responses from executives, uh, one of the largest animation companies in the world or most historic reached out to me to inquire about doing um, equity and diversity consulting with them. Oh, wow. And so my question is, um, doing something like this again, because the flip side, so I'm like, yay, all of these things happen. And like, I'm so incredibly helpful, you know, grateful for this community that was on that journey with me, um, which ended up being a four month process. But the energy that I expended, what I never anticipated was um, uh, the crash after doing that piece. So I mean, like I went through like, I had this pain, this throbbing pain in my right, I'm right-handed, in my right wrist as I'm doing the drafting. And then like, once it was off, you know, the pain in the wrist alleviated. And it was also amazing to connect with other, with former black employees of this company who reached out mm. and said, oh my gosh, it happened to me too. Mm. The article was my story as well as the story, my, my story as a consultant, but also the uh, two other former black oh. employees. Um, but I have, I'm having trouble writing again. And it's almost like that was pouring. I poured all of myself, all of my heart, all of my energy, all of my processing, what, you know, my own trauma, absorbing other people's trauma. And, you know, how do I, really recuperate and be able to continue to write at a high level. Mm -hmm. Great question, Brittany, and congratulations on all your success. We're so proud of you. Thank we're you. so proud of you. And we're so rooting for you. Excellent job, sister. Really, really, really great. Um, and yeah, so how do you keep going? I mean, that's, that's a question we all, all ask like every day. How do I keep going? How do I know when I'm done? <laughs> How do I, and then how do I keep going? How do I know when I'm done? We asked that question over there. So you, now you're at the, how do I keep going? You know, um, you know, you said you use the words recuperate. Sure. You know, just, just have, do some fun things. It's the holidays, you know, I mean, whether, whatever you celebrate, you know, much of the Western world is celebrating the holidays. So, you know, enjoy whatever things sort of present themselves to you as things that might be enjoyable, you know, binge watch your favorite shows, hang out with your friends, you know, maybe do some non-work related things, read for pleasure, you know, write for pleasure, just write stuff, just let your mind wander, you know, do some self-care things, you know, you know what I mean? And I mean, I think what I, here in that it's weird is a certain amount of anxiety about like will this work out and will this come through and if I remember correctly and I might not be remembering correctly that's a similar kind of anxiety you had when you were working so it's your base it's what's there all the time you know faith your faith in what you can do and what's going to come through for you and you just have to keep telling yourself that it's going to come through. You just do the work, you know, and, and the spirit has given you a great evidence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, Renita, you did the work. Here's evidence, right? So you, you, you just need to, you know, look at your anxiety and go, do I really need to be this anxious and worried and scared? You know, I mean, the marathon runners, have you ever run a marathon? I've almost run a marathon, but or have you ever... You have it. You have. Yes, you, you haven't. No, I have not. OK, so there's a you run. Just say you've run a marathon. Hurrah. You cross the finish line. You know, you had a good time. You know, you're going to run another one. 
just do some self care, but, but be aware that your anxiety about whether or not it'll work out is high when you're working and when you're not working, you know, and, and see if you can sort of talk to yourself about that. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's just a thing that I've just realized. Cause I remember when you were working on these articles, you know, right. So not a bad thing, just an observation, something to look at, which is great. It's great when we see things that we can look at in our process, not in ourselves, but in our writing process. I'm not talking about like you, I'm talking about your writing process, right? Okay. Something to look at and go, okay, 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 Vernita. What do I need to do to bolster my confidence? You know, what things do I need to do to feel good about me? Because that's where the writing is going to come from. That's where the next project will come from. What's going to be joyful? You know, did you, did you, did you, I mean, you know, I mean, retail therapy is a real thing. Did you somehow award yourself in some way, reward yourself in some way, in some way? Did you? Not really. I think I just really kind of kept my nose to the grindstone. Yeah, Yeah. Well that, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna cut you off. Nose to the grindstone, you know, I mean, do something, buy yourself some flowers, you know, it didn't have to be like, I went to Gucci and bought out the store. You know, it's not, I'm not talking about that. Yeah, right. I'm, t- You know, buy yourself some flowers. Take yourself out to lunch with a good friend. You know, something. Or let your friend take you out to lunch or something, something. I mean, you know, a bubble bath would go to a spa for a treatment or whatever people do. It, and every we all have our things that we enjoy, right? So you might not like flowers. Buy yourself a house plant. You know, that could be cool. Because there it is, a growing thing in celebration of. That's why they have the Olympians stand on those pedestals. And they go, they hang that medal on their neck in front of millions of people. It's a way of saying, good job. You need a good job after you do all that work. Yeah. Right? Okay. 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 Love it. And I'll, I'll, the last thing I'll say is I love that you said about self care because that's one of my platforms for this America's hot sauce brand. That self care is the revolution. Well, you got to practice it. You got to practice what you preach, sis. Thank. You. Okay. <laughs> it, is. It, is. it is. Okay. All right. I got okay. it. Right. How, how, right. how I celebrate it. Yes. Celebrate yourself. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Vernita. All right. Um, I'm going to say, Seth, is that you? You're next. Hey, Go Seth. Hi. Hello. Hello. It's nice to be here. I'm tuning in from Vancouver. Hey. Um, Masculine Squamish Slay with Tooth Nation. Land. Could, and could you speak a little? Can you speak? Can you raise your voice a little bit? Yeah. Yes. I'm actually at the library, but people oh, just oh, need oh. to hear me. It, okay. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, I can hear you okay now. Okay, great. Um, so I have been watching your interviews on YouTube and there's this one thing that you said to, I think it was Charlie Rose you were just like you know so, like something arrives and like inspiration arrives and I don't question it I don't you know I, I don't like think it, I, I think you said it in terms of like you know in terms of like critical thinking about that inspiration but I just give it give that a space and like follow that I have a hard time doing that <laughs> because I tend to just go like, is this meaningful? Is this going to help? Or is this going to like be beneficial? And so I have been just like that realization made me realize how much there's a blockage mm. in my creative practice, like, and how much it actually released that stress. Just like seeing you speak about that, just mm-hmm. such an ease. Mm-hmm. Just like, you're just like, yeah. Yeah, like I don't, I don't even think about that, and and I I feel like I have missed missed so many opportunities. Mm. Like I got into my dream school, and mm. because of fear, I was like, no, I can't do it. And so, mm. like, it's it's a big thing, and but I'm going to break the leg of that demon and do it next year, hopefully. But just wanted to ask you 
Can you expand on that a little bit more? And how do you follow that? What would you be see you doing if you were to give that a space? Sure. What a great question, Sess. And you, did you say you were going to break the leg of that demon? Is that what you said? Uh, yes. I mean, that's, I just want to be clear because I, I don't didn't want to miss here, misunderstand. I mean, that's. I think that's a phrase that that's that has in my mother tongue, but I translated that in English. What and is your mother it, tongue? <laughs> it's Turkish. You've called uh, before. You've called before. No, you? I no. You haven't this called is the before. First time. No. Oh wow! There's a dude from who's Turkish who calls. He has a yellow background in back of him. I'm sorry really? for for thinking that you were here. Yeah, sorry about that. That's <laughs> no, it's amazing. Okay. That's right. so break the leg of the demon. Okay, not to not to go against anything in your mother tongue. So let's just look at that demon for a minute. Mm. Because when you, so the demon, the angel, the spirit, the devil. So the, the th there's an, a spirit that comes to visit you and they give you gifts and they offer you things and you say no, right? Because, mm -hmm. because maybe you're trying to protect yourself, I'm guessing, I don't know. Maybe. Why? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's, I think that it is, I feel that it's a sensual and sexual energy. Maybe I'm blocking that. And also I am trying to avoid fear that comes with following creative life, mm -hmm. artistic practice. And so mm -hmm. I, I think I'm avoiding that step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I understand. I understand. Um, it, yeah, it's all about like where we feel safe, right? And what we, you know, and I mean, because there at any stage in your life or your career, you can feel like, wow, I'm being, you know, I'm being, uh, I have this opportunity and I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it uh, for all kinds of reasons, because we're, we're in a box sometimes of our own making. Uh, are, are you in a carol right now, like a, in the library or just in the library? You I'm just, in the library, but okay. I just found a chair in the okay, hall. Cool. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. Sometimes we're in a box of our own making and it's safe, you know, but the spirit says, Sess, come out of the box. And it's an act of courage to take those first steps, you know, Um. It's it's tricky. I, I I just I just want to say just I mean you know what you need to do. You need to follow the spirit. The spirit's calling you loudly. You know, mm. it it sounds like it is anyway. Um, it's calling you loudly, and here you are call, talking to me because you saw an interview I did t like twenty years ago. Um, you know. Um, but it's the spirit is calling you loudly and you want me to tell you to your face again, what you've already heard me say. Um, you walk the path. You won't be alone just in this room, this, this, this zoom room, you have friends who are on the path too. You're not, a, you know, you won't be alone. You'll be supported. Maybe that's what's frightening. Yeah, a little bit, you know, I think. Maybe to be loved is terrifying for who you are. Terrifying. To be who you're supposed to be. Terrifying. To be yourself. Oh, my gosh. You know? To be yourself among others who are being themselves. That's what we're doing right now. We're being ourselves. You know? So you have a choice. You can be yourself or you can be someone else, someone who will fit in in all those places that you feel comfortable right now. You know, you have a choice and it's OK. You, you, either way is good. Either way is good. OK. And it's no fault. It's no big regret or anything. If you choose, you know, you're at a fork in the road. Every day we're at a fork in the road, you know. But you did, you did call, you did call here and to talk with me. So mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what I told Charlie Rose. 
I mean, I've also <laughs> been reading your work. It's not only the no, 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 sweet uh, man. I know. I'm just. I'm all. I'm saying is that I'm just gonna say what you know. What I'm gonna say. Oh yeah. Because I, I, you know, and so I'm just saying, come on, come on, come on. Mm. You know, you know, you got accepted into the school. You know, would that be a step in the direction of what you really want to do? Yeah. Come on. You're not alone. Look at us. Look at all these people. Right. <laughs> and it's great. You can, and you can come and hang out here each time. We're here every Monday, you know, and we sit here and we do this. And look, you know, we get work done and we're from all over. We all look all kinds of ways. Isn't this great? You know? Yeah. So join. That's what the spirit is asking you to do, right? The spirit is saying, come on, Sess. Come on. There is no demon, Sess. There's no demon. No. Okay. Yeah. Thanks okay. very much. And just keep checking in. You know what I mean? I mean, when do you have to say yes to this fa fabulous school of your dreams? When do you have to say yes? Oh, I, I declined it already. Okay. So what yeah. are you going to do now? What are you going to do? It's okay. Maybe, hey, you know what? And maybe, uh, maybe what, what you're supposed to do. Don't worry. Hey, look, you're here. This is good. <laughs> hey, is it like a grad? Was it like a grad school situation? Um, it was, it was actually, so I've done a uni in Istanbul. Okay. Um, and it was actually undergrad here in Vancouver. It was actually a decline, but it also told me I should go. Like they accepted me, but they also told me I should go for MFA. Okay. And, and so I'm actually, yeah, I will audition to schools yeah. in New York, actually. So, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So maybe that's what you really want. Maybe you're just saying, you know what? I really want to do something else. Yeah. Okay. But do something. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And just keep checking in now that you found us. You know? Yeah, we'll do. You know, there's that song. Now that we found love, what are we going to do with it? Look it up on Spotify. It's a soul song. Anyway, it's kind of cool. But, you know, we're your tribe, bro. So, come on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, too. Yay. <laughs> We've got about five minutes left, and we're going to go to Emma. Emma. Hello again. Hey, Emma. How are I'm you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. You too. Thank you. Um, so I, I'll try to keep my, like, my introductory rambling contained for the last few minutes. Um, but I, I feel like I'm still a kind of at the beginning of my writing journey, like I'm still kind of green. And mm -hmm. so a lot of my writing right now is like, and this is not like a slight to myself, but it's like a lot of it is kind of like derivative of people that I like and that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm kind of trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And so I'm trying to get better at discerning like when I'm making a choice, like if it is the thing that will be best or like necessary to tell the story, or if it's something that I'm just doing to like make it more interesting or because it's something that I saw that I liked and like, I can't always tell the difference. Um, so I guess my question is like, do you have any advice for getting better at that? Or like, is that something that you've noticed in your own journey as a writer? that like you got more confident with that as you went along? Mm -hmm. oh, it will definitely get, I got more confident as I got along, but also different pressures come into play, you know? Um, so confidence when you're, you've got five years of writing under your belt is different from when you've got 10 or 15 or 20 or 40. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but my, just all, throw something down, put something down, write something, you know, don't have your critical mind going, is that the right word? Is that the right preposition? Just throw something down. Keep going, get to the end. Yeah. You know, just throw some words down, put some, or do whatever, make the work and then put it aside for a little while and then pick it up again and look at it and activate your critical mind, you know? 
you just see what I mean? You got, you just yeah. gotta write stuff. You just gotta yeah. write stuff, and then you can look at it critically. Does that make sense? Because then you're not in the middle of it going, eh, I don't know, is this the right word? Oh, this could be, I don't know why I'm choosing this word that's getting a different part of your brain involved that's not really going to help you get done. Yeah. That I think sense? I was like, I was thinking about it because of the, the question at the beginning about workshopping. Mm-hmm. Like my, I went to undergrad for acting. Mm. And so I have like some devising experience. And mm-hmm. so I feel like what I'm used to is like being around people and throwing something out and then immediately getting feedback about mm-hmm. like, that doesn't make any sense or that's a terrible idea. And then I'm like, okay, great. Now I can like, like I get a lot of external validation from that or just like, I, I just don't have a lot of practice, I guess, like listening to myself or like recognizing my own instincts. Right, and that, that, that's, that's great, that's great. And so now you're a writer and this is one of our superpowers. So you're gonna, you're gonna build it. You're going to build your superpower, you know, you see what I mean? You're just going to work on it. It's like a muscle. I don't know. What do you do? You do yoga or something? Maybe the, I don't know if you're natural. The first time you do yoga, I see people, you know, first time you do down dog, ah, you know, you got to work it. It's a muscle. It's, it's a, listening to yourself as a muscle, yeah. you know, you know, you just got to work it and be patient and enjoy it. You know, but really just get to the end. Just, just that external validation, what you turn it into is external condemnation, you know, in that question, you turn it into an external questioner. It's not giving you validation. Just you don't listen to it. You listen, the one you're listening to is in here and just get to the end of the piece. Okay. Definitely. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, Emma. Well, we've got about seven seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> are we here next week or are we here next week yeah if you yes. Know, December yes, 20th. yes 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 yes, yep. yes yes i'm looking into the distance like i'll know everything yes yes december 20th yes we have yeah we have another dis- another monday another monday the final mm-hmm. class of 2021 the final class of 2021 um yeah yeah and we'll yeah. we'll look into next year soon yeah yes oh yeah def we'll be back we're here okay love you guys thanks SLP. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks, HowlRound. Thanks, Public Theater. Bye.